Okay, hi everyone and welcome to the Heart and Lung Convenience Store. Um, I'm Leah, this is Eleanor, and we work for the National Heart and Lung Institute. Um, and our job is to look at what bacteria and what microbes live in your lungs. Um, so we're gonna run through the processes that we do in our lab in order to go from getting a sample from your lungs all the way through to analyzing the DNA on the machine, kind of like that, but quite a lot more expensive. Um, so the first thing we do is get a sample. So we can do this in several different ways. We can get a sputum sample. So that's kind of what you cough up when uh, you've got a cold. You know that horrible gunk that you get when you get it in your lungs? Well, that is what we can, we can get the bacteria from that. We can use a throat swab. So this is kind of like a cotton bud that you would use to clean your ears, except it's very, very clean. And we use that to swab right in at the back of the throat. And this gives us a representation of what is in your lungs. Or we can go right down into your lungs using something like this, which is a lung brush. And it's inserted right down into the lungs. And then on the end of it is a tiny little bottle brush, which kind of looks like a tiny version of that. And Eleanor will come round and show you in a second. And we can scrape that in your lungs, give, give it a little wipe and that, and bring it back out and we can get the bacteria off of that. So Eleanor can come and show you what's on that. So once we've got our sample from the lungs, we need to get at the bacteria. And because bacteria are so tiny and because we have so many different types of bacteria in our lungs, we don't just look at the bacteria themselves, we actually look at the DNA. So the DNA is like a barcode in the cell. And we can use specific sections of that DNA to tell us exactly what type of bacteria are in our lungs. So we've got our sample, and we're going to try and get the DNA out of that sample. Well, bacteria are kind of like this tin of soup, OK? Tin of minestrone soup. And the DNA is kind of like the pasta within the soup, OK? And we want to get the pasta out. But there's a hard shell in the way, so we need to break that open to get at it. So we're going to use some of these. These are feed beating tubes. And in here, we have one big glass bead, lots of slightly smaller ceramic beads, and loads and loads of tiny, tiny glass beads. Kind of looks like sand within the sample. And we add our sample to that. So we'll take, if, we, if we had a throat swab, we take that throat swab, we cut off the end, and we put it into this bead beating tube. From there, we take it to this machine, okay? This is our bead beating machine. So, we've got an example here. So we've got our beads at the bottom. We've got a little bit of a uh, extraction buffer we put in there in our sample. We stick it in, and we close the lid, and we hold our ears. And this machine is going to shake, hopefully. There we go. Yeah. It's going to shake up the cells, OK? And all the beads are going to break open the hard shells of the, of the bacteria within there. So they're being broken open. And what we've got now is essentially the soup inside, OK? So we've got all this soup. It's all been broken up. But this isn't really very helpful to us because we still need to just get the DNA. And we've got a big mess of everything. We've got all the vegetables, we've got all, so that's the proteins, the, um, the, all the carbs that have made up that whole bacterial cell and all we want is the DNA. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use what we call a centrifuge to spin down the sample and Elena's, so it's gonna spin really fast. And what happens here is that the heavy stuff goes to the bottom and we get left with a clear uh, section at the top, which will have our DNA, maybe some proteins, but we see we've got different levels. So we've got 
clear at the top. We've got all the proteins, all the rubbish from the cells, and we've got our beads at the bottom. See that? But the DNA is not quite pure enough for us yet. So what we're going to use is this. This is a, a binding matrix, kind of looks like sand. And what happens is the DNA binds to the little particles in the bottom here. And when we shake it up, DNA will bind to all of that and we can wash everything else away. And that will give us nice, clean, pure bacteria. And we end up with about this much. Okay, this is 50 microliters, okay? So bear in mind that this would be one mil, and what Ellen has got there is 50 microliters. Just that from one sample, and that's going to give us the DNA barcodes of hundreds of thousands of different bacterial cells. And we're going to take one microliter of that, so less than a drip of that, and we're going to put that into our sequencing machine. Okay? And from there, that amplifies up. So it makes lots and lots of copies of the DNA so that we can read the barcodes and we can use, our, use machines to tell us exactly what kind of bacteria we have within our lung sample. And we can actually do about 100 samples at a time, 100 to 200, depending on how much information we want. And it reads it on this. This is a flow cell. So Ellen, I'll take you around. And the machine uses lasers to read to read the uh, the barcode of the different bacteria, and gives us in a form of a, a file that we can use on a computer to tell us exactly what kind of bacteria are in your lungs. So we can look at the differences between people with healthy lungs and people with different sorts of diseases like asthma, COPD, even cystic fibrosis. And we look at the different types and we can tell the difference between the different communities. And we can try and work out what, how we can uh, manipulate those communities to lead to better outcomes for patients. So we want eventually to be able to take the bacterial communities from an asthmatic patient and make it more like a healthy individual.